Latinx, Chicanx, Henisaro, Colonial, Spanish American, Mexican American, Indo Hispano, Chicano, Converso, Crypto Jew, Ciudadano Mexicano, Español, Mestizo, Castizo, Mulato, Indio, Ancestral Puebloan, Navajo, Apache, Comanche, Poblador, Conquistador, American. I'm Robert Martinez, State Historian of New Mexico. As you can see, identity in New Mexico is a very complex and complicated issue. I just gave a litany of self-identification in New Mexico through the centuries, and it's not even all of them. It's just the ones that came to mind while I'm sitting here talking to you. But they all have a history. They all have roots in a complex history that goes back centuries, dealing with Native American people, African people, a Spanish colonial system that had slavery and had a casta system that identified and categorized people based on their racial background, their appearance, how they dressed, their skin color. And it was an attempt to control people and to control the population and maintain a power structure in the hands of Spaniards from Spain or Spaniards born in foreign lands. So where do we go from here for all of us New Mexicans dealing with these issues such as identity and race? Well, to begin with, we need to realize that the Pueblos had a complex system of governing and religion in place uh, all the way uh, from about uh, ooh, what's now Socorro up to Taos, over to Acoma, and then to places like Picuris and Pecos. That was their dominion, and archaeology is showing that it might have even been greater than that. When the Spaniards came in the 1500s, they brought different kinds of people, different kinds of uh, uh, civilization, and it all started to mix with Native Americans. The Spaniards weren't the only outsiders coming in in the 1500s and the 1600s. You had Apache warriors, the Pacheria, a Navajo, you had Ute, Kiowa people. The Apaches are interesting because they had the Apacheria. It's kind of a, 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 an empire down near what's now Chihuahua, Mexico, but it extended up into parts of Texas and in New Mexico. And it wasn't a, a settled empire. It was an empire that kind of moved with their nomadic communities, and it started to come up into uh, the area we now call northern New Mexico uh, by the 1700s, and also coming into contact and clashing with Comanche warriors who were coming from the east. So think about that. It's quite an amazing mix of humanity here. With the Spanish, there were people from Spain, people from Mexico, Mexican Indian women, a Tlaxcalan, um, Mexica, Nahuatl, Chichimec Indians, a, a vital mix of Mexican Indian. Uh, there were Portuguese. Uh, later on, there'd be French people coming into New Mexico. So um, think about this. Oh, and our African history starts in 1539 with Esteban Nico. There were Africans with the Oñate colony in 1598. And then with Vargas, there were Africans. Se Sebastián Rodríguez was the African drummer and town choir for Diego de Vargas, and he established a family here. So we have a deep African history as well. So this comes into play when we're looking at how people identified themselves. So let's go to that point. Did people identify themselves, or did they have identity imposed on them? Well, it was a little bit of both. Um, you might consider yourself Espanol, but a priest or governor might look at you and say, you're mestizo, you're lower in the casta ranks. Um, it might also be that people around you say, oh, he says he's Espanol, but he's really a mulatto. So 
a lot of identity isn't just how you see yourself. It's how others see you and how you're perceived by the uh, greater community at large. That's important because, again, during that colonial period, that colonial Mexican period, when we're part of the Spanish Empire, which had this casta caste system extending from New Mexico to Chile, from the Caribbean all the way to the Philippines, it's quite amazing how vitally mixed we are and how identity gets passed down through the centuries. So when we become part of Mexico, we're no longer uh, given these racial designations. We become ciudadanos mexicanos, at least officially. We become citizens of Mexico. Everyone does. The Pueblo people, the Hispanic people, the, the mixed blood people, all of us become ciudadanos mexicanos. The Spaniards had slavery, but that system of African slaves did not make its way to New Mexico. We were too poor. Uh, there were no uh, sugar plantations or huge haciendas or estancias that would require that form of labor. However, by the 1600s, the Spaniards had Native American slavery, not the Pueblo people. They did get uh, abused under encomienda and other, other systems, but it was mainly those uh, Plains Indians that I mentioned earlier, the Comanche, Apache, Navajo, Ute, Kiowa. They would be uh, captured, they would be cautivos, and they would be put into Spanish families uh, as uh, servants and slaves. These are the genisaros, people who no longer belong to their native communities but were not quite accepted into the Spanish community. Also, these folks would be taken south to places like Parral, to be sold, never to see their homeland again. This human trafficking went on for the better part of 300 years, and it went in all directions, and it shaped identity. For example, Apaches would raid uh, Hispanic towns and then take women and children. They would take them to Mexico to sell. Uh, Spaniards would raid Comanche towns. The Spanish would take women and children and keep them. Uh, the Comanches... And Apaches and Navajo, they would raid Hispanic towns and Pueblo towns and take women and children and keep them. And it was a back and forth uh, sort of operation that went on for over 100 years and even into the 1800s. So this also is part of how we are identified, how we identify um, during the Spanish period, during the Mexican period, and then into the American period. What's interesting, when you look at the census records, we're identified in the 1750 and 1790 census as Españoles, Castizos, Mestizos, Mulatos, Indios, Coyotes. Then um, under the Mexican census, I think there's one in 1845, we're Mexican. The United States, it's interesting, the United States didn't have a category for Mexican people. It said white, black, or mulato. Uh, the first U.S. census in 1790 didn't even identify Native Americans. You'd think they weren't here, but they were. They just weren't in the records. So we kind of disappear, too. When you look at the 1850 census through to, say, 1900, all the way to 1940, we're listed as white, W. Although sometimes you'll see MX written over that and MX all the way down the line where someone's saying these people are Mexican. Something interesting happens in the 1880s around then. We were not allowed to be a state because people back east, they had their own form of racism just like the Spaniards. They didn't think that uh, the gift of democracy and statehood should be given to what they considered to be savage Indians and mixed blood Mexican mongrels. They thought we weren't worthy and couldn't handle it. And they wanted to maintain their uh, white culture and keep it as separate from black or other mixed race as much as possible. So this is a problem for us trying to become a state. Around 1901, an Anglo-American writes a very insulting article about the local Mexican people. Well, a guy named Eusebio Chacon responded, and this guy meant well, but it would have been better for all of us if he had just said, we're Mexicans, we're proud of our Mexican heritage. We're Puebloan. We're proud of our Puebloan heritage. You must accept us for who we are, and you must accept us as equals. Instead, he said something like, 
The only blood that flows in my veins is that brought by Juan de Oñate. Well, that implied a couple of things. It implied that he and us New Mexicans descend from Juan de Oñate. We don't. Juan de Oñate left and did not leave any family here. It also implies that we descend only from the colonists who came with him. And it also implies that the colonists were only Spanish, which they weren't. So this is the beginning of this idea that uh, New Mexicans are Spanish and not Mexican. Before this, no one was running around saying that. People were being identified however they were identified given the government system that was ruling them. This leads to statehood in 1912 when it's decided that New Mexico can be a state because we're considered Spanish, Espanol. And it also leads to things like the entrada, uh, this idea of uh, celebrating uh, Spanish conquest of the Pueblo people. This starts in the 1920s. It's not a tradition that goes back to the 1700s. Um, there were no statues to Juan de Oñate in New Mexico in the 1600s, 1700s, or 1800s. There were none to Vargas in the 1700s or 1800s. Uh, these are uh, new ideas that are put in place to help New Mexico look American. If you go to cities and towns in the south or in the northeast, you see statues to local heroes. Um, and so the idea was that, well, we need statues to our local heroes so we can look American and be American. I mean, there's nothing wrong with that. That's part of being part of a nation, of a community. But this identifying with Oñate, identifying with Vargas, is really not true uh, cultural identity. It seems like some people will say, there's Juan de Oñate, and then there's me. As if the 12 generations between, where there's mixing with Native Americans and people of African background and other European background, uh, just didn't happen. Or this idea that our Hispanic culture is the exact same culture that uh, Juan de Oñate colonists or Vargas colonists lived, which it isn't. Our Hispanic culture is beautiful. It reflects the history. It's shot through with old Spanish words. It has uh, food ingredients from Spain, but also from Mexico and the Pueblo people and the United States bringing innovations to our diet and to our lives. Our language reflects that. It's not Spanish from the 1600s. It has certain archaic forms like truje, asina, but it also has some uh, deformations like Pader instead of pared, or suidad instead of ciudad. These are just uh, things that happen to a language when the population is far away from centers of education and learning. So our Spanish has Spanish, of course, uh, from Spain. So does Mexico. Um, uh, it has Mexican words, uh, atole, comal, tecolote, chocolate. It has Mexican slang, chante. It has uh, American words, troca, brecas. Uh, it's an amalgam of the different governments and civilizations that have come to New Mexico over the centuries. So we need to keep that in mind and remember when we're identifying that we're not just one thing. It's impossible to be one thing. It's impossible to descend only from the Oñate colonists or only from the Vargas colonists. All of us New Mexicans of Hispanic background have roots in Spain, Portugal, France, Mexico, uh, Mexican Indian, Mesoamerican, African, North African, a lot of North African, Jewish. We have Jewish roots. We have a lot of that in our past, the converso, crypto-Jewish phenomenon. That They're our ancestors as well. And of course, American. So I'm just going to leave this right here. And I hope you'll think about what I've said. And um, I hope it helps us to try to understand why we identify the way we do and how that impacts the people around us and how they perceive us as well. Thank you very much. Hasta luego. Goodbye.